Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello, welcome everyone. Today we will continue on discussing the metathesis reaction. You have seen ring closing metathesis or RCM. In the last class, we have discussed the last example about the two in and one ion reaction. So, di 9 reaction. The molecule was having two in and one ion. Initially, the organometallic intermediate was formed at one of the terminal in. Subsequently, that organometallic intermediate containing part reacted with alkyne because that was the more favored ring formation, which will give rise to five membered ring and those five membered ring containing metal cycle then reacted with another in to give a fused five and six membered ring formation. Today we will discuss some more example of this ring closing metathesis reaction. First of all one problem always we have to encounter and that is the geometry controlling the geometry of the olefin that is generated during this RCM reaction. Well, of course, the olefin can be cis or trans in nature. Let us look at the first example, one example where two terminal olefin is undergoing ring closing metathesis to give a huge something like 19 member ring formation and in the process what we see that the product is a mixture of cis and trans. So, let us look at one of those example. When we are looking at this molecule, this is reported by Shuji, we have seen that the two olefin are there on the terminal position, they are interlinked by an ester. Now, in, in presence of a tungsten catalyst, okay, we have the ring closing metathesis in progress. Overall, if we react this to terminal olefin, we will get a 19 membered ring, 7 from this alkyl part, 8 from this alkyl part. Overall, it becomes a 19 membered ring. However, in these cases it gives a mixture of cis and trans product. Now, there are not too many ways to control these cis and trans product formation. One of the way to control the cis and trans product formation or the controlling the geometry could be reacting with an alkyne instead of an olefin. So, these reactions are going to be alkylidinine chemistry, where an alkyne instead of an olefin is reacted with, with the organometallic intermediate. During the process, of course, if the two alkynes terminal position, two alkynes are reacted, those alkyne will give rise to the newer alkyne, where there is no problem of any geometry. Now, that linear al that alkyne, the final product alkyne, if one is reducing with a suitable reducing agent, then one can control the geometry of the olefin. Let us try to look at these alkylidin ring closing metathesis reactions and how to control the geometry in, in those cases. The example which we will discuss first is by Alloy Fushner. Okay. So, this is a terminal alkyne 
not in truest sense, but uh, you know there is an alkyl group on the on both the side of the alkyne. Now, what Frushner has done. Now, this compound he has synthesized and he has taken Schrock catalyst that is the carbine okay, tungsten catalyst with carbine along with tertiary butoxide 3. This is the this is the you know tungsten reagent that he has taken and this is this you can call as Schrock alkyl lidine alkyl lidine under this condition what one can synthesize is of course these two alkyne will clip and will give rise to this interesting compound in a moment we will um, see this is five of them and that so this is the one which is going to be the final product where two alkyne is reacted with an alkylidin and it is undergoing a ring closing metathesis reaction. Now, that is a very interesting product because two alkyne is giving rise to another alkyne which is now really a huge membered ring in the process. Overall, if one is trying to clip between react between two olefin namely terminal olefin or even internal olefin during the process controlling the geometry is extremely difficult. One way to solve this or rather not directly solving it would be taking alkyne, two alkynes will undergo this metathesis reaction in presence of an alkylidine species that is an organometallic species the one we have seen is from Schrock where tungsten alkylidine is reacted with the two alkyne substrate within one molecule to give rise to the internal alkyne. In the process the huge ring that is formed can now be reduced with for example, Lindler's catalyst which is a palladium hydrogen catalyst. Now, in presence of that now you can control the geometry of the olefin which is generated from alkyne in a way you want. Overall if, if you look at this product then we will see this alkyne to al olefin conversion and the and the product formation leading to a world famous perfume and which is which is very very cool way to synthesize this perfume ok. Let us look at that molecule again that we have synthesized. So, this is the compound we have synthesized by by using this Schrock alkylidine species and it has been reported by Fushner. From here on we can react it with palladium hydrogen that is the Lindler's catalyst. Overall we will be able to get this civetone. This is you the oldest perfume that is known. This is the ingredient of um, oldest perfume and it is usually used in ec under extreme dilute condition. So, this is used very very dilute and you know it can be synthesized by a chemist quite easily. Now, of course, this perfume industry is widely dependent on these ring closing metathesis reaction. I am sure all of us have used perfume at one point of our life or almost some of some people may be using regularly. Other perfume that is quite famous is muscone. Of course, there is a natural source, but you do not want to kill a lot of deer to get the 
must go on, right. This is of course illegal at this point and therefore, scientist has relied on synthesis of this perfume and a lot of these perfumes are nowadays synthesized chemically rather than utilizing the natural resources because those natural resources are scarce and you know you do not want to go or push any animal into extinction by, uh, by doing extraction of this perfume. So, the muscone for example, can also be synthesized by a similar pathway that we have synthesized or we have shown for civetone which is you know which is the world's oldest perfume known and muscone is the one which is nowadays used quite widely. Let us look at the structure of the muscone. This is a, again a ketone this is a very cool molecule and this can be synthesized. So, this olefin can be generated, this olefin can be generated by utilizing the, the similar procedure. So, overall what we have seen um, that any huge ring can be generated in the process of doing the ring closing metathesis reaction. Technically, any terminal olefin or olefin at any position, um, two of those can be put together to generate yet another olefin. Of course, same is true for alkyne. One can put together two different alkyne together to form a new alkyne in the process. But let us look at that chemistry of the alkyne leading tungsten species which has been studied in details and even there exists crystal structure which gives the idea about the intermediate that is involved during the process. Let us look at the mechanism. So, mechanism for these alkyl, alkyl leading spaces. So, we are taking the tungsten alkyl leading reacting with an another alkyne overall it is a 2 plus 2 reaction to give you tungsten intermediate. The most inter interesting part of this is this is now characterized by x-ray. Now, what in x-ray it is found that all the bonds over here are equivalent, all bond lengths are equal. Overall you can give a canonical structure for this in the double bond then shifted based on the fact that all the bond lengths are equal you can see that the, you can say that this is a you know this this is a resonance structure between these two species right. So, these are resonance structure and subsequently if one is undergoing retro 2 plus 2 oh, we can get the tungsten with another alkyl leading moiety and uh, this is this has to be really interesting at this point because um, you know we overall we get this new tungsten alkyl leading intermediate. So, we started with a shock catalyst that is tungsten alkyl leading we reacted with a alkyne overall it is a four member transition state or four member intermediate that is that we find this is crystallographically characterized which clearly suggests that between the two structures there is a resonance and um, therefore, all the bond lengths are found to be equal and this gives rise to the a clear mechanistic idea how this might will be happening during those ring closing metathesis reaction. Next topic that we would like to discuss is carbonyl olefination. Now, all of us are familiar with carbonyl olefination in our undergraduate studies or graduate studies. This olefin, you know, of converting these carbonyl olefination reactions are mostly known in terms of this uh, Utig reaction, right. Of course, there is no organometallic intermediate involved. Although Utig reaction is quite popular, it 
expects every region to be popular, but a number of cases UTIG reaction does not work. Then if you want those UTIG like product, what is the alternative? Well, you have you have this metathesis reaction to rely on to get those UTIG like product. Now, let us look at the pros and cons of this metathesis reaction to synthesize the carbonyl olefinated product. Carbonyl olefination is the next topic that we would like to discuss. Carbonyl olefination also alkylidine chemistry, these are stoichiometric reaction. Of course, that is true also for the UTIG reaction. The chemistry we would discuss today is the is with the Schrock carbon, this is the Schrock carbon this you can draw in a different fashion as we have discussed Schrock carbon is nucleophilic at the carbon center. This is similar, similar to what you know about the UTIG reagent, this is your UTIG reagent and this is a equivalent thing for a Schrock carbene reaction. Now, overall what you do in the UTIG reaction is this triphenyl phosphine and this alkylidine equivalent you react with let us say R 2 aldehyde overall to give a, a intermediate where you have H R 1 and let us say H R 2 O minus from there you get R 1 and R 2 H H along with triphenyl phosphine oxide. Now, if you look at this chemistry of the UTIG reaction, of course, you are able to generate a olefin from an ketone. Now, similarly, if you are using this carbine chemistry, those of Schrock metathesis reaction, metathesis reagent, Schrock catalyst, if you are using and reacting with, with olefin, you can get exactly similar product as you get in UTIG reaction. Let us look at one of the example where Schrock carbine is used for the UTIG reagents. Now, this is done by Schrock in early 80s, 1976 rather, 1976 by Schrock. He reacted it, his Schrock catalyst, which became famous later on, reacted with a olefin to give an intermediate, which looks like just your UTIG reagent, UTIG intermediate. Now, if you do that, overall you have a 2 plus 2 and a retro 2 plus 2 to give you the tantalum oxide much similar to your phosphine oxide and the product that you get in the process has the tert-butyl part because the tert-butyl you started with the reagent, now tert-butyl ended up with the product. Now, this reagent if similarly if you want to react with a lot of other reagent, you can you can react with a number of ketone to get the corresponding product. As you know UTIG reagent really does not work with ester, that is one of the limitation of the UTIG reaction. But if you are interested in this Schrock carbene for example, you can react with ester of course, aldehyde, ketone, ester at will to get the product that you desire from the ketone to corresponding olefin product you can get in acceptab acceptable yields. The same thing we cannot tell about the UTIG reagent because UTIG reagent fails with the ester. Let us look at one of those example where 
ester is reacted with the stock carbene to give you the newer olefin. First of all, let us look at one of the ketone example. I think that we have discussed during this process overall we get this T butyl containing ketone in 80 percent yield. Okay, that is great. Interestingly, as I was telling that ester also react to give you the corresponding olefin in, in 60 percent yield. <coughs> Now, Utig reaction of course, does not work with the ester because ester is less nucleophilic in nature. Now, another case where Utig reaction does not work is the let us say you know DMF if you want to do Utig re reaction on DMF can you do that? Of course, you cannot because it is you know that aldehyde center is less nucleophilic in nature you cannot get a Utig reaction with with her DMF. Now, DMF or even ester any ester you cannot do and this is where this uh, stroke carbene or the metathesis type of reaction becomes much more interesting and can give the product and it is used industrially in lot of cases where Utig reaction is failing and these reactions are now used as an extremely dependable alternative for the Utig reaction. Let us look at one more example with DMF. Now, DMF is the one this one. So, these are even less or lower nucleophile compared to aldehyde. From there on you can get using this uh, using this uh, your stroke, stroke carbene you can use the reagent. Now, that is that is fine when when a lot of limitations is there in Utig reagent you can utilize this carbene chemistry to get the desired product namely ester and amide which never really participates in the Utig reaction. But there is a problem in these cases because as you see in all the product the final compound if you look at carefully there is a tarbutyl unit invariably whatever you want to do that comes in. So, that got to be the limitation of such reaction where you cannot have any other alkyl group at the olefin partner. Now, if you are ok with the tarbutyl group if your target molecule requires to be tarbutyl that is fine, but if you do not want that this is when uh, the Tebez reagent becomes much more useful and it is actually found to be quite versatile even more versatile than than Strzok's this carbene chemistry. So, let us look at the Tebez reagent and let us try to see what it can do. Uh, of course, these, these reagents are alternative to the Utig reaction when Utig reaction has no way to deal with the, the product formation Utig reaction fails completely then when Car stock carbene comes into picture and of course, um, of course, the your Tebez reagent comes into picture. Stock and Tebez reagent of course, works very well for aldehyde ketone and every other things, but one may not want to use them when Utig re reagent is working, but ut when Utig reagent is not working this is the only way to move forward with the ketone to olefin product formation. So, Tebez reagent as you know Tebez reagent is a titanium species this is cyclopentadienyl titanium species which is ready to give you the, the active catalyst from there on this is done in 1978. So, these are methylenates. The, the reactive species are the one where this is dicyclopentadiene titanium methylenates is forming and this is better better this is better in scope compared to even the stroke one better than stroke in scope. So, by using the Tebez reagent one can use of course, one can react with aldehyde 
ester, ketone, amide and whatever other reagent which is incompatible with, with the Utig reagent can now be incorporated quite efficiently. Let us look at one of those example uh, by which the Tebes reagent can be of great use. First of all, let us look at the ester of course, as we have discussed these are not compatible with Utig. Amide, ketones all can be aldehyde everything can be reacted with, with, with Tebes reagent. This can be reacted with Tebes reagent. The one example that we will discuss specifically is, uh, um, is the one where you have analyzable proton for example, this ketone. Now, this there if you are reacting with if you are reacting this reagent this ketone with Utig reagent you get very little product because Utig there is a analyzable proton which is not compatible with the Utig reagent. Now, so therefore, if you take pH 3 P double bond CH 2 this is very little product you get enolization, enolization as the side product or side reaction. Now, these are Tebes reagent or Tebes reagent can be used over here very beautifully, because these are less Bronsted basic and therefore, lesser ability to accept proton. So, less enolization you, you can expect. So, less Bronsted acid, Tebes reagent is less Bronsted acid and therefore, it is not promoting the enolization that very effectively and overall we can then get quite a good reaction with, with this with these Tebes reagent. So, these ketone which are enolizable, they usually give you the side reaction as the analyzation as the side reaction, which is what the problem with the Utig reaction is. Now, using Tebes reagent, you can get or convert this ketone into corresponding olefin without any problem. Once again, then what we have discussed in this class that Utig reagent is a reliable reagent for converting aldehyde and ketone to corresponding olefin. However, in a number of cases Utig reagent does not work and this is where Schrock carbon can be extremely beneficial and the problem with the Schrock carbon is it leaves a tubutyl or the you know the carbene terminal is getting incorporated into the product often we may not want that into our product. Although it works decent with ester it works well with even the amide. This is when, when the Schrock carbon cannot be utilized for a sum of the substrate. Tebes reagent, I would say, is most versatile and can be used widely. Of course, it can react with aldehyde, ketone, ester, amide. This works beautifully. So, it is a very good reagent with respect to the Utig reagent. Now, whenever Utig reagent fails, I would like you to think about the Tebes reagent even for those ketone which are having analyzable proton, one can react those reagents to get the corresponding ketone to olefin product formation. All right. So, in the class so far, we have discussed about mainly the Schrock carbon and its reactivity. We have seen how the Schrock carbon has developed and some of the reactivity pattern of the Schrock carbon. In the next class, we will get back to Fischer carbon and their reactivity pattern. Till then, keep studying, we will see you in the next class.